A Brief History of the Abuse of Money. If you want to dive deeper, here are the resources I use to help create this essay. Ray Dalio's Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order, also made into a more easily digestible video. Roy and Glyn Davies, Comparative Chronology of Money. Debt, The First 5,000 Years by David Graeber. Niall Ferguson's The Ascent of Money. Dan Carlin's Hardcore History, specifically the Blitz Human Resources episode. The Fourth Turning by Neil Howe and William Strauss. Money has been around for a really long time. The story of our human civilization starts somewhere between five and 10,000 years ago, and we have proof of money being around since the very beginning. Why is the history of the abuse of money so important? The problems we currently face with money and the problems we will face in the future, they've happened before, over and over again for thousands of years. Yet we ignore the lessons. Why? Our understanding of money generally comes from what we've experienced within our own lifetimes, a measly hundred years max. But on the grand timeline of human existence and money, our short lives are a tiny blip. The common history of money told by economists and textbooks fails to recognize unique relationships between humans, money, credit and debt, and the complex evolution of money. History also favors the times when money has worked well, not when it has fallen apart. And it has been falling apart since the very beginning of time, dragging entire civilizations and economies with it. Sometimes it helps to zoom out, like right out. When you zoom out far enough, you find a single mistake that sends every kingdom, every empire, every society and every nation down the same spiraling path of chaos and collapse. Not a single empire or nation has managed to escape this mistake. We are on the brink of collapse thanks to this same mistake right now. The Abuse of Money on the Timeline of Recorded Human History To better understand the abuse of money and the mistakes we humans keep making when it comes to financial technology, we've created a timeline, 12,000 years long, from the birth of our modern human ancestors around 10,000 BCE at the end of the last Ice Age, right up to today. This tiny blip at the end of the timeline, this is us, the last 100 years of the modern fiat money system we use today. But different empires, nations, kings, rulers and politicians have been creating, abusing and breaking financial technologies for thousands of years. We have records of inflation, deflation and currency debasement dating back nearly 3,000 years. To best highlight the mistake we keep making over and over again throughout history, we've split our timeline into seven chunks or millenniums, 10,000 BCE to 4,000 BCE, 12,000 years ago, 4,000 BCE to 2,000 BCE, 6,000 years ago, 2,000 BCE to 1,000 BCE, 4,000 years ago, 1,000 BCE to 1 CE, 3,000 years ago, 1 CE to 1,000 CE, 2,000 years ago, 1,000 CE to 2,000 CE, 1,000 years ago, and 2,000 CE to now. As the timeline reaches closer to today, the updates become more frequent because we have better and clearer historical records, da. But also because human evolution and technology have been progressing rapidly and exponentially over the past thousand years. We've done our best to remove the financial jargon. There are just three technical references that will be helpful. Money debasement, reducing the value or quality of money. In the past, this was empires and rulers reducing the amount of precious metals in their coins. Today, this is government and the Fed printing magic money with no backing. Inflation and deflation, the cost of stuff going up or down, often heavily influenced by money debasement. The gold standard, ensuring that money is always backed by a fixed amount of gold. If you have a $1.20 banknote, that banknote is redeemable for a fixed amount of gold. We currently do not operate on a gold standard. Today, your $1.20 banknote is backed by nothing. It's important to note that different empires, nations and countries have been overlapping, intertwining, merging and destroying each other, themselves and their money for thousands of years. We've taken one thin thread of history and stitched it together to highlight the big mistake we keep making. A mistake which has led to the abuse of money over and over again for thousands of years. If you're watching the video or listening, we've summarized each time period. For the full timeline, read the full essay. 10,000 BCE to 4,000 BCE, 12,000 years ago. The first chunk of our timeline dates from the end of the last ice age and the birth of our modern human ancestors up to the emergence of the first human civilizations. 
This was a period of relatively slow progress of money. We exchanged crops for tools, fur for weapons and livestock for building materials. It was mostly livestock like cattle or grain, which were used as the earliest forms of money. There is a common story told in textbooks that a barter system, five chickens for your finest loaf of bread, existed before money. But there are now compelling arguments that more complex gift economies and records of credit and debt were established first. 4000 BCE to 2000 BCE, 6000 years ago. This is when the first civilizations emerged in Mesopotamia, Iraq, Syria, Iran and Turkey, and Egypt. They quickly evolved into complex societies through the development of new technologies like writing. Historians believe writing may have been created to help keep accounts of money. 2000 BCE to 1000 BCE, 4000 years ago. Great civilizations like ancient Egypt and the Shang dynasty emerged. We started developing more complex economic systems. Although there was no uniform or widely used coins, coinage, various forms of value based on weight and standardized measurements were invented. Commodities like grain, cattle, gold, silver, and precious stones became forms of money. As these civilizations expanded, centralized authorities, rulers, and government began taking more control of the creation, regulation, and oversight of money. The Code of Hammurabi, for example, was a set of laws created by King Hammurabi of the Babylonian Empire. It included banking and financial regulations. 1000 BCE to 1 CE, 3000 years ago. So this is where the story of money really starts getting spicy. Buckle up. The rise and fall of the great empires, the Romans, the Persians, and the Maurya. The rapid spread of knowledge and trade through networks between China and the Mediterranean, the Silk Road. These great empires developed coinage, which was the widespread creation and use of standardized coins with official markings, weights, and compositions of metals. You can thank these great empires for the coins you still use today. If you still use coins... Widespread coinage was great because it made things more efficient. It was a better medium of exchange between people within their societies and economies. But it was also not so great because it allowed rulers, emperors and governments to capture and abuse the control of money. And they did abuse money. Roman rulers began severely debasing their currencies, largely motivated by the need to fund military campaigns. There are even records from Greek theatre referencing debasement and inflation, and so the story of the abuse of money really begins. 1 CE to 1000 CE, 2000 years ago. Over the next thousand years, global trade networks continued to expand, connecting Europe, Asia and Africa, and facilitating the exchange of goods, ideas and technologies among different civilizations. During medieval Europe, a social and economic system called feudalism emerged. It involved the exchange of land for military service and the establishment of hierarchical relationships, where individuals with fewer resources agreed to obey and serve their lords. The Roman Empire experienced growth during the earlier part of this millennium. However, due to a series of greedy Roman emperors who debased their money to fund extravagant lifestyles and conquest, the empire eventually collapsed. The infamous Emperor Nero took control of Rome's finances and debased the currency to fund lavish feasts, grand projects, luxurious possessions and war, which contributed to extended inflation. It's important to note many conditions contributed to the fall of the Roman Empire, though money debasement played a big part. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Eastern Byzantine Empire arose and lasted for over a thousand years. In China, the Tang and Song dynasties were known for their significant technological and economic advancements, including the invention of paper money. However, they too faced challenges as they debased their currency and encountered difficult times. Overall, there was a noticeable trend towards centralization and control over the production, standardization and regulation of currency and coins by the major empires and ruling authorities. 1000 CE to 2000 CE, 1000 years ago. Between the years 1000 and 2000, humanity entered warp speed transformation. The Renaissance, Enlightenment and Age of Exploration brought about a revival of art, science and intellectual pursuits. They also led to advancements in human rights and political revolutions and laid the foundation for globalization, everything becoming more connected. The scientific and industrial revolutions propelled mass production and economic growth, 
and helped us build ginormous armies and killing machines. Technological advancements, including electricity, global transportation, computing, and the Internet, ushered in the information age and revolutionized communication and information access. This era marked the emergence of a globally interconnected species. In terms of money and financial technology, widespread coinage gave way to banknotes, and medieval banking evolved into centralized banking institutions with national currencies. Improved bookkeeping facilitated widespread loans, credit, debt, and other financial instruments. The modern banking era followed, characterized by global financial networks, the internet, fintech, online banking, and mobile payments. But it was far from smooth sailing. Globalization exposed ideological and political differences, leading to endless wars, conflicts, casualties, and widespread devastation. The latter part of the millennium was marked by global conflict and increasing debt as nations and empires fought for world dominance. If you review the timeline of conflict over the past thousand years, you can really get a feel for just how stupid humans can be. There were bloody crusades between Christians and Muslims, the conquests of Genghis Khan and the Mongol Empire, and conflicts between the Byzantine Empire and the Turks, which led to the rise and fall of the Ottoman Empire. European colonial empires, including Portugal, Spain, England, France and the Netherlands, engaged in extensive crusades, exploiting resources and destroying cultures like the Aztecs, Incas and Mayans. They established colonies in Africa, the Americas, Asia and Oceania. Throughout the millennium, repeated conflicts happened between Britain, France, Germany and Russia. France fought wars with Britain itself, then Britain and Russia, and then Germany. British colonies in the US fought a war for independence from Britain, and a century later fought a civil war against themselves. In the 20th century, Britain, Russia and France ended up on the same team going to war with Germany. More countries joined either side, entering total war mode and directing all resources to war. During these conflicts, ruling entities controlled financial systems and manipulated money by debasing it to fund war. This resulted in horrific economic conditions and suffering, particularly for those with fewer economic resources. Debt reached unprecedented levels and entire nations collapsed. The US and its dollar rose to become the new dominant global power. By controlling the world's purse strings, it continued, and still continues, to accumulate vast amounts of debt through money printing and debasement. Less fortunate countries with less control weren't so lucky. With rapid population growth, they were forced to borrow large sums of money. Major US banks, JP Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, gladly lent to countries like Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Nigeria and the Philippines, leaving them burdened with unpayable debts and dire economic conditions. We divided this millennium into centuries because of the remarkable events that occurred compared to previous time periods. If you're watching the video or listening, you'll find this in the full essay. The 2000s to now. We now live in a world at the peak of hyperconnectedness. Economics, politics and culture, global trade, communication, travel, technology and social media have us all brewing together in a big, bubbling human soup. Everything is connected and shit is getting really weird. As globalization tightens its stranglehold for better or worse, economic cycles and money become harder to predict and control. Technology continues to improve exponentially while artificial intelligence is pushing the dial past turbo mode. Unfortunately, control of money is also the most hyper-controlled it has ever been. Global world debt has reached unimaginable heights, and there are claims that the world's biggest economy is on the brink of collapse. The US and its currency, the US dollar, have long been regarded as the monetary superpowers of the world. However, recent tensions and the emergence of rival economic alliances like BRICS signal the possibility of a seismic shift in the existing global order. If you subscribe to Ray Dalio's thesis, we're just about fucked. Political tensions and the potential for conflicts are brewing across the globe, with ongoing issues in the Middle East, Korea, Taiwan, China, and more recently, Ukraine and Russia. And if that weren't enough, we experienced a global financial crisis and then a pandemic of epic scale, COVID. Yet, amidst this turmoil, a faint glimmer of hope emerges. The emergence of the first truly global, decentralized currencies and supporting technology. Conclusion By now, 
you'd think we'd have learned a lesson or two about the consequences of money being controlled by a single ruling entity. Ladies and gentlemen, in case it wasn't obvious, this is the big mistake. We hand over the keys to the control of money to a single ruling entity. That control leads to abuse, often in the form of debasement of money for conflict, which eventually contributes significantly to the collapse of every civilization, kingdom, nation and country on the face of the planet since the very beginning of time. Some argue that war and money exist in separate realms, and perhaps it's true that war and conflict would happen regardless of money. However, it's difficult to argue that the scale of these events would be the same if we hadn't relinquished control to those single ruling entities. Regardless of the civilization, nation or country, the one that can most effectively seize control of its money will exploit that power to ascend the throne of dominance through conflict and military expansion. Once atop the throne, rising and competing superpowers feel threatened, causing them to shake the foundations until the reigning superpower falls. And the fall is always hard. Economic collapse, turmoil, recessions and depressions and more conflict. The worst part is that those hit the hardest are not the ones who made the decision to grasp control. They are those lowest on the socio-economic ladder. Those who have the least resources experience the worst hardships when empires fall. To prevent this cycle from repeating, we need to change our financial technology. We need to distribute and decentralize the control of money equitably. For the first time in history, we have a genuine opportunity to make this happen. A new potential monetary system powered by blockchain technology and cryptography offers the means to distribute control of money equally and globally out of the hands of centralized ruling authorities. If more people could understand and support this vision and opportunity, we could truly rewrite the narrative of human existence.